Hey, good morning to y'all. Today's Wednesday. I believe we're starting part four of our texturing part of our series. Last time we uh, put some ribbed corrugated steel on our, our building. Um, now, when I do my final building for uh, Akron Kenton Airport, I'll, I'll do some things off the screen to kind of fix things up but I'm trying to show you guys the basics uh, we're gonna do a little bit more PBR texture today and then we're gonna do a little bit of glass and then we're gonna make a sign so let's see if we can get this going hey I appreciate you guys' patience and coming back and watching this stuff I know I drone on and talk a lot but thanks for Thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> All right. So this part of the hanger and other parts use corrugated steel. Okay. So you basically apply your corrugated steel like on, on, your, on your doors and, and the other side. You know, this part of the hanger up here above the doors is corrugated steel. Okay, now another material that you might encounter in your modeling is cement, uh, cement masonry units, or as the common folk call them, <laughs> uh, cement block. All right, so if we look at our prototype in Google, even though it doesn't really show up all that much in the Google Earth Pro version, uh, I can pretty much assume that the office wall is a concrete block. Just because I know 1960s, 1970s construction for industrial buildings is probably concrete block. All right, I can't be 100% sure. I don't have any good photos of this uh, building, but we are going to assume that this wall and this wall up here is concrete block. So we're gonna use a PBR texture that is close to, P uh, to a concrete block, and we'll use some scaling to make it look more like concrete block. All right, so I've downloaded some um, I've downloaded some textures or a texture, and I believe I got this from uh, a z uh, c zero zero. Uh, again, the link to textures is in the description of the video. All right, so we got bricks nineteen, and it's a four K image. All right, and so we have ambient occlusion uh, let's see I don't know what the, oh I can just delete that okay we got ambient occlusion it came with a color it came with a di displacement a normal and a roughness okay it does not have a metallic which most likely it wouldn't because it's stone and not metal all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Krita and again a link in the description to download that for free as well. Um, we'll open up Krita and if you remember in the last video we built uh, various various layers based on the red, green, and blue channels. All right. So I'm going to create, first I'm going to create, I'm going to, uh, the reason I'm going to create, I'll show you. I'm going to create a new image, and I'm going to create a blank 4K image. So we're going to go new image, and uh, 4096, 4096, 72 DPI, 16 bit, and we are at RGB. Okay. So let's go ahead and create that. So it creates the 4K image. The default is white. Um, but in my opinion, I don't trust the first layer. I just don't. I mean, I do, but I don't. So I'm going to create a layer because I want to create a white albedo layer. So I'm going to go new 
paint layer and then I'm going to rename this one to white. Okay, so now I have a white layer. It's not white. If I turn those off, you'll notice that it's transparent. So let's do a uh, square select box and make a box around that whole thing and change our, our active color to white and let's go to our paint bucket and drop some white in there so it looks just like it did before right except I know it's a white layer using RGB and the alpha so I'm going to deselect deselect that so now I have a white layer I know for sure that that's white all right now let's go and open up our pieces parts so we're gonna go to file open and we're gonna go into our directory where we have our texture and we're gonna first open up the roughness and you notice that it's gonna come in um, it will have it will have a color base assigned to it already based on the artist that generated it, okay? Sorry, my phone. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that artist's um, definition of the color, and it's gonna be a gray, I know it is, but we'll talk about this in here, here in a second. I also wanna open up some of the other layers, so I'm gonna open uh, the ambient occlusion and I'll get the same thing for the artists uh, definition of that and then I'm gonna open up one more and that's gonna be the normal okay and I'm gonna we're doing something with the normal that I want you to see alright so we'll open up normally you wouldn't do the normal for you know building your different layers but I'm gonna use the uh, normal for something else that I'm gonna show you okay so we have the normal all right now let's go back to the rough now the the one that says not saved let's go ahead and do a save as so we know that we're creating a Krita file right here let's create a Krita file and we'll call this, since this is brick 1.9, we'll call it uh, brick 1.19. I'm going to leave off the leading zero. Okay. And let's go ahead and save that Krita file so we don't lose anything that we do. Now let's go over to roughness real quick. I'm going to show you. Um, now remember in the last episode, I opened up a, rough, a roughness layer and it had... Uh, it already had a, uh, a red, green, and blue uh, channels, right? But since the artist actually rendered this in a grayscale, if I right-click background and show the properties, you'll notice that it only has two active uh, channels, one gray and one alpha, okay? For what we're doing, since this since this image is in grayscale, it doesn't know how to assign the grays to the green channel, which the roughness texture needs, right? Okay, but that's not a big deal. And the reason it's not a big deal is, let's cancel here is because when we created our new blank image to, to bring this stuff in, since we created it in RGB, it has a red, green, and blue channel. Channels, should I say, and an alpha. Okay? Now, anything that we add into this Brick19 Krita file, no matter what the artist created, it's going to bring it into the settings of this file. Does that make sense? So this file has RGB. The roughness that we opened over here doesn't have RGB. It just has gray and alpha, right? But if I copy this into our new Krita file, it will take on 
the characteristics of our new file. Does that make sense? Here, I'll show you here in a second. So we're going to create a roughness layer to, and we're going to turn that into the green channel. All right. So with the roughness open, the roughness file open, let's do a control A. So we select everything. Let's do a control C to copy that to our clipboard. And then go back to our brick 1.9, which is a 4K image, remember. So both the roughness and the, our new file are both 4K. All right. Now I do a control V and it will create a new layer right here. And we're going to rename that to R for roughness. You don't, you can call it anything you want. All right. So now it has brought the pattern of our roughness into our new file. Okay. And then just like we did last time, let's right click on that layer, go to properties and notice that it now this image it's a copy of the image now has a blue green red and an alpha you with me all right now since the roughness goes to the green let's turn off the blue and the red and we can yeah let's go ahead and save the alpha okay so so we at least have one alpha channel and let's hit okay all right, so now the roughness is mapped to the green channel. Let me double check, make sure I did that right. Yeah, it's mapped to the green, so we're good. So you see, even though the artist who created the texture saved their image as a grayscale, which is good, um, Blender, the way that we use the MSFS parameters, uh, Blender... Um, needs to have it on the green channel, okay, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then you would basically, you know, to save this out as a roughness layer all by itself, you know, you just turn off the white and then export that as a PNG, right? But we want to add in the ambient occlusion, right? So let's click the ambient occlusion, and open that file and look at the properties of that and it's also grayscale okay just like the roughness was so what we're going to do is we are going to control a select everything control c copy that to the clipboard go back to our Krita and do a control v to paste it and rename this layer to a o Call it anything you want, but I'm being consistent. And then we're going to right-click the properties of AO. And since ambient occlusion goes on red, we'll turn off blue and green. And we can turn off the alpha since we'll have an alpha in it. All right. So click OK. So now we have, we have a red channel and we have a green channel. Okay. And then the metallic layer uh, could be, since it doesn't have metallic, um, you can either not do it or you can make a metallic layer. So let's go ahead and create a metallic layer. And I'm going to make it flat colored, so I'm going to make it all black. So let's go to layer, new, paint layer. And let's call this the M layer for metallic and F for flat. Hit enter. Okay. Then we want to make sure that MF is active layer. Do our selection box. Create a create a selection box around that area. And turn our active color to black. And go to our paint bucket and pop some paint in there which is black right but we need to make that on the blue channel so right click the MF properties turn everything off except for the blue so now we have our 
metallic layer for the MSFS parameters slot. Okay, so we have a red, green, and blue, and an alpha channel, right? So then what I could do is I can save my Krita file since I created it. And we can go to File, and we can go to Export. And in our directory, we can call this, we'll call it uh, underscore A-O-R-M-F, OK? And then change Krita to PNG. OK, so we're creating that and hit Save. And then accept, change the compression that you want. OK? Now, the one thing I haven't done is I'm going to turn off, let's deselect, get rid of our selection box. We don't need it right now. Turn off the metallic, the ambient occlusion, and the roughness. Oh, you know what I did? I need to re-export that. I'm sorry. I need to re-export what we just did. All right because I had the white layer on all right so I don't want the I don't want the albedo on so my my fault all right so turn off the white and let's just re-export that with the same name because I had the white layer active and we don't want that so let's select the AORMF and re-export that it exists yeah that's okay all right, so you guys see what I did? I left the white layer on, which is all RGB, and that would have affected our our texture, okay? All right, so we have that re-exported. So let's go ahead and turn off those and turn on our white, which is gonna be our albedo, right? And that has a red, blue, green channels, and they're all active, right? Okay, so let's export that one out to Albedo. And we'll come down here and we'll call it underscore and we can say Albedo. I don't know why they call it Albedo. Albedo is reflectivity. When you're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and and light coming to earth albedo is the amount of reflection um, of the earth or any celestial body or anything actually <laughs> all right anyway I digress so let's save that export so now we have a albedo image which is white and we have a metallic image which is uh, ambient occlusion on red Roughness on green and metallic on blue channel and then an alpha. Okay, now let's go into Blender and see what it looks like. All right, so let's select our office wall. How much gets selected? Is it just that one? Yeah, it's just that one wall. Let's select our office wall. And let's come down at this corner because I'm going to show you something that some edits here in this corner. So with our office wall selected, make sure scale is zero. If not, go to object, apply scale. Okay. Let's go into UV editing and hit A over here in the right side. Hit A period to focus our selection. And let's kind of move our view around so we can see. Okay, so <laughs> sorry about that. All right, now come up to UV and Smart UV Project. And I always turn off Stretch and then hit OK. And so over here, we get our UV map. All right, now what we want to do is rotate this so our doors, see how our doors are open on the bottom? We need to rotate that, all of those, so hit A, 
to select them all and I'm in the left side view here in the UV editor I'm the R90 so we got our concrete block windows here our concrete block windows our block glass block windows here and then our doors are open on the bottom which is right let's zoom out and we'll G X move that in the X direction you don't have to do this part because it's all relative but anyway I'm kind of a uh, OCD here all right so we have our building oriented now we're gonna add in our textures so we're gonna come over here and create a new texture and we're gonna call this uh, CMU for cement masonry units concrete blocks for those that <laughs> speak English so to speak all right hit enter so we have our concrete blocks now let's come down here and set some settings and see the goofiness that's going to happen so we're going to come down to MS MS FS parameters and we're going to select standard and we for our veto we're going to open and we are going to go to where our um, images now normally this would be in your model lib texture directory but for for this video I'm not going to put them in there right now um, so I'm just going to go to the default textures that I have. Um, but if I'm going to apply this to my model, I'll put it in. I'll put all those textures I create into my model lib texture directory. All right. So here we have bricks one nine. So I'll click that. And so here is the image that we created for the metallic that will plug in right here. And then there's our white albedo, and that's what we're mapping right now. So we'll click open. So now our wall is white. And remember what I told you last time, white is probably one of the worst colors to work with because it gets so saturated and it looks gray. All right, so let's go to layout real quick and I'll show you. See how that looks gray? I don't like it. I don't like it but that will change here in a second all right so let's go back to UV editing okay now let's add in um, our metallic which was that layer that we created that a o r m f and go to where we were before select open Okay, you don't see anything, but if I zoom in, of course I haven't scaled anything either, so, okay. So, if I come over to the left side, hit S to scale, now you see over in the right, you can barely see some of the blocks, okay. It's kind of subtle right now. All right, you can barely make out some really because everything's selected in orange. But let's go to layout, and now I'm going to zoom into this corner. You can barely see some gray in there. Okay, that shows our blocks, right? Okay, those will show up better here in a second. All right but our wall is still gray all right it's like that albedo is being washed away all right so let's go back to uv editing and let's go to our normal over here and let's open up that normal image and add that to the normal socket right here So go into select the normal PNG, 
open image. Okay, now our blocks show up, but they're still gray. But we're gonna take care of that. All right, and there's a reason they're gray. <clears throat> But before we do that, notice how our blocks do not meet <clears throat> on the corner. Okay? We want to fix that. So I'm going to select this polygon right here. And I'm going to kind of zoom out. And there's that block right There's that wall right there. Okay? Whoops. With this polygon selected, I want to get my grout joints to line up all right so with that polygon selected i need to move it up so g y and then i hold down my map my sh whoops see see what i mean if you move in the wrong window just hit escape come over to this one over here in the uv editor hit g y and now you can slide this up and down all right i'm going to hold my shift key so it's oh, so it's more precise in the movement if you hold your shift key. So I have kind of my grout lines a little better. However, blocks aren't like this in the corner. Okay, so let's move this in the X direction. So in over here on the left side, G, X, and then I can slide these until my blocks look more realistic and a concrete block is eight inches wide by 16 inches long by eight inches high is the standard okay so when i do my final building i'll adjust that make it look better maybe make the blocks a little smaller you know that kind of stuff you're going to do that with with your uv maps all right, you're going to just adjust until you get the look and feel just right, okay? But I can, A, select everything, hit S, and I can scale those even more, okay, to make them more realistic. And then you might have to come back and adjust your polygons you know to get those right so g y move those down where those line up let's do it this way but you be as perfect as you want all right so we have the concrete blocks but i'm not happy with them because they still look gray and i haven't adjusted the corners perfectly okay now in my perception, if I look at this wall, it looks like the grout lines are not inset. They look like they're coming out at me. All right. That means that the light isn't hitting my surface the way that I want it to. And that is usually an issue with the normal layer. Okay. But I see I want to make a little bit of adjustment on this corner here. So let's go back to UV editing. This is where my OCD comes in. All right, with this pol with this face selected, I'm going to over here, I'm going to do a GY. I'm going to Oh, I got s No, I don't have snapping on. All right. Let's see. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's like it's snapping, but I don't have snap on. This is going to drive me crazy if I keep doing it. All right, let's call that good for now. <laughs> it's going to drive me insane. Okay, now. So the light of my blocks isn't really hitting my object the way that I want it to. Okay? Just, it looks like my grout lines are, are coming out. Now over here it looks like they're in. 
but we're going to make a subtle change not a subtle change we're going to make a big change to our normal layer okay so let's go to UV once you do your UV editing you can actually uh, you don't have to be in UV editor once you have a UV map created you can actually be in layout mode to change the characteristics of of your texture over here okay all right so let's go back into Krita and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the normal just like this and you notice that this cyan color right here that's where it was really bright see this line right here it's really bright colored all right this actually should be shadow all right it should be the inverse all right because this makes it look like the lights coming down and hitting this surface like this and brightening this edge right well these blocks the shadow this shadow now this shadow is right no this shadow is wrong this should be bright and this should be dark because the shadow should be at the bottom so it looks like the grout's inverted so what that's telling me is we need to invert the color scheme of our normal layer so let's open up Krita and with our normal the cyan is bright and the magenta is is dark all right it's the shadow we want to flip that so this is the cyan is dark and the magenta is light okay so what we're gonna do is with our normal image selected we're going to come up to filter go to adjust I think it's adjust is it adjust yeah go to adjust and come down to invert and click that so notice that the magenta I mean the cyan color went magenta and the cyan was put down here we just inverted it. it it looks totally alien now but that's okay but we inverted the color set of the normal map now what we're gonna do is we're gonna resave we're gonna export this to an inverted version of our normal so we're gonna go to file export and we're gonna call this we're gonna keep the name normal but we're gonna put invert at the end and we're gonna save okay let's get out of Krita now let's come over to our settings and let's get rid of the original normal okay and let's open a new normal and we are going to open the inverted version open image now our concrete block is both white because of our albedo and the shadows are correct for making our grout joints look inset to our block okay the next step on working with this would to be make sure that all of your all of your polygons are rotated correctly in your UV map okay so you notice that inside the door they're not correct so let's go to the UV editor and you're just gonna have to play with some of these polygons to get them to flip in the right direction so we're gonna select this polygon and this polygon okay and if you hit your if you hit your period key on your number pad you'll focus into the selected features 
and then I'm going to select this polygon and this polygon. Now, I would select all the polygons that I want to uh, rotate, okay? But I'm just going to work on these for now, just for the video's sake, because it, you know it's going to be long because I'm making the video. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so we have these selected. And then over on the left side, notice that they show up over here. So R, and let's rotate rotate those 90 and now our joints are the correct orientation and now we just need to G Y and move those up or down so our grout lines relatively line up that's close for now but it looks like this block goes around that corner better okay so you'll need to make some of those final adjustments by, in your UV editor, select the polygon, and then on the left side, you'll do your rotation and your moving, okay? Remember, if you do rotation and movement on the left view, it's actually going to rotate those polygons. Here, I'll show you. We'll show you. Rotate. See how it rotates? The, yeah, you don't want that. Hit escape come over to this side and do your rotation and your movement and that will just move move those polygons over your texture below okay let's uh, go out to our layout mode zoom out okay now you notice on the ribbed steel I took off that smudge layer because I didn't like it but this still looks a little gray. I'll fix that um, when I get ready to do my final model. All right. Now, the next step, or our next part of our project, is we are going to play with the frames of the windows and the windows. Okay. So let's select. No, we can just zoom in like this. All right. So you can see that our frame is gray. I'm going to delete that there. And I'm going to delete that there. Okay, so it's nice and clean. All right, so let's select our frames of our window. And let's go into our prototype in Google. And we're not going to get a really good look at the frames, okay? But they're they're probably a dark gray, maybe. They could be black. Uh, this image is, is interpolated. It's not a true photo, okay? So it looks like these are probably black frames around the window. And then we have a smoked glass, all right? So let's minimize that and and let's uh, use the easiest form of adding a material in Blender. So with our frame selected, we are going to come down to our material properties and we're going to hit new and we're going to give it a name of uh, w frames for window frames okay and then hit enter now we just want to we just want to make this a simple black kind of a glossy not too glossy but uh, um, kind of a satin finish to it right all right so all we're going to do is with that selected with we're going to use the principal shader and we're going to select the color that we want and I'm going to make it more of a bronze so I'm going to move that down into the orange area and then I'm going to darken that by sliding this down so it's not really black okay it's kind of a it's kind of a brown okay let me do my focus here and we can 
zoom in like this. It's kind of a dark brown, kind of a bronze color, all right? That's, I like that color. Now, you can make it whatever color you want. All right, now let's give it some shininess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the metallic a little bit, and we're gonna bring down the roughness, okay? Now, if I go all the way down, it will, it will um, be really shiny, but we don't want it really shiny, so I'm gonna bring up the roughness a little bit just to give it a shat satin sheen to it. Kind of like that. Alright, see how it's reflecting the light there? Alright. So, that's the easiest way to apply a texture. Just use, just change the color and, and move some of these settings around to get the effect that you want. So here I just wanted a, you know, a metal frame that's bronze color and it has kind of a satin sheen to it. All right, so that's our window frame. Now, let's talk about glass. First, let's select our glass, <clears throat> at least the glass windows. Okay, we're not selecting the panels on our hangar doors. So let's select our glass <clears throat> and talk about different ways to texture glass, all right? The first way is applying a standard MSFS um, material. So if I come down to, <clears throat> sorry, and notice I'm not doing any UV unwrapping of the windows. <clears throat> sorry, I get a cough. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm not doing any UV unwrapping um, of the objects when I'm doing glass. And I also notice I didn't do a UV unwrap when I did the frames. Usually when I'm just using the principal shader to just add a color to something, it's applying equally to every surface that you're um, texturing. So you don't really need to do a UV unwrap. UV unwrap is when you're using an image or a PBR texture and you want to lay it out correctly. All right. I usually don't unwrap my windows or like door frames and stuff like that. All right. So we have our glass selected. If I was to use a standard texture for the MSFS parameters, I'll click new, let's give it a name, and let's call it glass, and we'll call it uh, standard, glass standard, all right? Now, if I come down to the uh, material parameters, and I select MSFS standard, <clears throat> I can do a couple things. I can do a lot of things, all right? I wanna give it a color, and white is, um, white is white. <laughs> I hate white. I hate working with it in the sim. It's so hard to deal with. All right, so I'm gonna select white, and I'm gonna off-white that a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to come down to the alpha multiplier, and I'm going to put 0.25, okay? That means it is 0.25% opaque. Zero would be completely transparent and one would be completely opaque. <clears throat> so we have 25% uh, opaqueness to it. Does that make sense? Or 75% transparency. Okay. Since I set that, 
if you come up to base color, you're going to notice two, two characteristics in that same slot. All right. This is what it looks like opaque. And this is what it looks like based on your settings of your alpha channel. Okay. So let me come down here to alpha channel and we're going to change this to 0.75% opaqueness. Okay. Remember one is completely opaque. So let's go 0.75 hit enter. And then I'm going to come back up and notice how less transparent that window is. Okay. And then this is the albedo color of that window. So it kind of makes it look like a silverish window. Okay. If you want it to be like a smoked, uh, smoked brown or something color. All right. Come back up to your principal shader, select that and move your color wheel into that shade and then play with your darkness to make it look more smoked. Okay. So here I have a brown smoked window and I have 75% opaqueness. No, do I? Did I change that back? Yeah, I have 75% opaqueness to it. So this is how it will render in the sim. It will kind of be transparent, kind of won't be transparent. Okay. Now there's another setting. You can play with metallic and clear coat and clear coat roughness and you can work with the shininess like if it's more of a mirrored look to it you can make adjustments like that so you can turn up metallic okay and you can turn down roughness okay and that will put a shine to your window all right now if you're doing night lighting and you want to have that window light during the nighttime, you know, like there's a light on inside the building, you're going to come down to where you have your multipliers. Here's our albedo and here's our opaqueness. Okay. And you can decrease that. I'm going to make that 0 0.6. All right. So if I come up here, it's a little bit more transparent. All right. Now, what do you want it to look like at night? Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to come down here to in the color multipliers. You're going to come down to the emissive color and click that. And then you're going to decrease the value. And I usually go, you know, less than one. Okay. Notice it's showing up gray and I'll explain that here in a second. But if I click and change the color, this is what it would look like at night. Okay. Kind of a brownish yellow which would make sense if the if the light in if the light if the color of the glass was kind of a smoked color however if it was completely transparent and they had a yellowish light inside you can easily decrease the darkness whoops in, increase the value to make that even brighter and then move your color over and so this color would be what it looks like at night, kind of a bright yellow. So you'll have to play with those values and look at them in the sim and maybe tone down your light color if you're using this method for your windows. Okay. Now, one important thing that you need to do using this method in order to have this light show up at night is scroll down in the MSFS parameters and you're going to notice 
a tick box that says day night cycle if you click that then when it's in the sim during the day it's gonna be that smoky brown look and at night it's gonna be this color okay of the emission color alright makes sense now you won't know what it looks like in the sim until you export this out and then load it in the sim and as we finish our building when we get into the episode of adding this to our simulator then you'll see that but right now you're not gonna really get a good idea of what it's gonna look like okay bear with me the other thing that you need to know is if you're using the MSFS standard method of making windows and you have a emissive color for nighttime by default in blender it will always show the emissive color all right does that make sense only in blender all right so even though our glass our glass standard material is brown smoky okay with a yellow emissive texture to it at night in blender it's gonna always show the emissive color all right just know that okay another way of making glass in uh, MSFS is not using a standard uh, standard texture okay so let's come up here to glass standard and let's X that now we don't lose that texture that textures there uh, if you'll do the pull down you'll notice that glass standard still there and it has a zero next to it just means that that texture is not assigned to anything because we just uh, disassociated it with our windows okay but it's still there to use and then as soon as you decide what you want to do you can apply that okay to a to an object alright now let's create a new let's create a new texture and let's just call this glass just all by itself okay hit enter now we're going to come down to MSFS parameters and under material mode instead of doing MSFS standard we're going to choose glass now notice one thing in blender and blender only when you use MSFS glass it does not render the glass at all okay it's almost like you just put a transparent piece of glass in there right okay and in blender you can't see the glass all right just know that but when you go out when you export this out to the simulator it's going to be what you told it to be all right now we need to give this some characteristics because right now it's just transparent glass all right there's no shininess to it no color to it all right so in the MSFS glass parameters if you come down to albedo okay I need to show you something all right keep an eye on this base color all right so come down to MSFS glass and click albedo and change that color now I would I would recommend taking a look at the hex code of whatever colors that you're working with and write those down so you can make sure that you got the exact same color that you had before okay but I'm not doing that in this case I'm just kinda guessing alright so move our slider down to something in the orange because we're gonna make it a smoky brown and then the same move your uh, value down to darken it up okay to the brown see how that is right there and if we come up to the top 
you'll notice our base color is brown. Now let's come down here to the alpha and put 0.6, okay? And then come up to our base color. And notice now we have transparency assigned to it. Okay, see how that works? All right. So we're doing basically the same thing with the MSFS glass material as we did with the uh, MSFS standard material. But there's a caveat with the glass. All right. And that's with the albedo. Okay. I mean with the emission. If I select the emission and I de-intensify, let's go less than one, and change this to yellow, to kind of a this color of what we would expect light shining through a smoky brown window would look like at night, okay? So if this is the emissive color, okay, the problem is, is if we if if we um, scroll down you notice that we don't have a day night cycle anymore okay this is a problem <laughs> if you guys use the MS FS glass material uh, put some notes in the comments on how you get it to shine at night, okay? I usually will just put lights behind the window and I don't use the emissive, okay? <clears throat> and I allow the lights that I add to shine off all the stuff that's inside the building and so you can see it. I usually don't use the emissive slot when I am using MSFS glass. Hey, if you guys do something different, put it in the comments. Let's find out how you guys do your glass, okay? So I'm going to move that back all the way up, move these values. No, I need to go the other way. I need to go the other way. I need to make all these zero. There we go. All right, so now I don't have an emissive color at night, all right? <clears throat> it's just going to be smoky brown, even at night. And in order to see inside the building or see light coming out of the window in the simulator, I'd place a light or use Blender to place a light inside the building so it lights up what's inside the building, which is, in my opinion, the way that light really works but uh, light in the sim is not as realistic as you think it is okay it shines through walls and stuff like that because the way they did the the game engine doesn't do shadows uh, very well other than sunlight um, but we have looked at two different ways to do glass um, doing it by the standard method uh, is good because you can assign an emissive during night but the problem with using the emissive texture at night is the glass is not transparent okay uh, if you have something inside the building and you're using a standard MSFS at night you will see a yellow window as it's being lit up but you won't be able to see anything that's inside the building. At least that's what I found. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Okay? If you want to actually, at night, sitting in your airplane at a gate, and you want to see inside the terminal building, I would use the MSFS glass and then put lights inside the terminal to light up everything inside then you'll be able to see inside the building. Does that make sense? Okay. Or you can use a parallax, parallax uh, texture, which we're not going to talk about. Okay, there's lots of vi videos on parallax textures. All right. So 
that's glass. So we did our concrete block and showed you how to inverse your normal so the light is correct. And we also did a basic texture for like doing window frames and stuff. Okay. And then <clears throat> I showed you a couple ways of doing glass. All right. Now we are going to add our Timken sign. And what is a Timken sign? Well, the name of the company that owns this hangar is Timken Engineering. <laughs> All right. So let's look at our prototype and come around to the front. It's not a very good image, okay? But they have the word Timken on this sign and it's on a uh, gray background, all right? So we are going to create, and I did a video on making a sign when I, um, I was working on my Toledo Express Airport, K-T-O-L and I showed how to make a police sign in uh, Creta and then put that on a placard that was on the side of the building. This is basically the same process except we're using a different texture, okay? So we know that we have a big sign on the front of this hangar, so we need to make that in our model. Ooh. I got a notification. My son's on BattleBots tomorrow night. Okay, switchback. BattleBots, all right, they're one and one. They have actually won a match. So tomorrow, I think they play their third match in BattleBots. So watch BattleBots and cheer for switchback. Anyway, I digress. So we're gonna go into our model and make a uh, uh, placard uh, uh, make a plane for where our sign is going to be all right so let's uh, model something so let's select our uh, door shed and go into edit mode okay this wall of our door shed and we're going to select this polygon right here okay and we're going to shift S and move our cursor to the center of that polygon just like that now it's a little off center but we'll take care of that here in a second what you could do is go into vertice mode and select that vertice and then do a shift s cursor to selected and that gives us we're more centered right okay now get out of edit mode and let's see here I want to go to my Quonset collection select make sure that's selected so my sign gets put into that collection all right I'm gonna shift a mesh plane okay hit period to zoom in on it okay now what we need to do is with that plane selected we need to rotate that on the x-axis 90 degrees okay so it's like that and then we're gonna uh, let's see I don't know how big that sign is so let's go over here go to measure where's my measure box oh there it is over here all right so with path selected let's measure that corner to that corner and it's roughly 20 feet long okay and for height I need 3d path and we're gonna go from here to here so it's roughly 6 by 20 okay so let's go back into our model and come over to the dimensions and since we've rotated it let's go to object apply all transformations so uh, it orients our X Y and Z's correctly all right so now let's make our X 20 feet whoops I know what I did wrong there please hold let's control Z to undo that 
all right my origin it's scaling it from the origin and my origins down here okay so what I want to do is change the origin to the geometry of the plane that I'm working with so I'm gonna right click set origin origin to geometry now if I scale uh, if I come over here to X and put my 20 now it's correct see how that works all right and my Z is six feet tall so that gives me my sign just like that okay now we need to move that out from our siding because it's inside of our siding so we're going to move that in this Y direction a little bit so G Y hold my shift key so I can precise move it okay so there's inside the building there's outside the building that's good alright now we're gonna move it in the Z direction G Z and move that down till it looks right Let's look at our prototype and see how that sign looks. Okay, it's close to the doors. All right. So let's move that G, Z, move that down further. Okay. Now, we may not have the exact size of our shed perfect, but it'll look fine when we're done. At least I hope. Okay. So we have that. So that's where our Timken sign is going to be. Now, when I'm doing signs, I might do things a little goofy than a lot of other people. But uh, you can make your decision on how you want to do that. All right. So with this plane selected, I'm going to come over to Table Contents, hit Period, so I can focus. And I'm going to rename Plane to Timken sign hit enter okay period will focus that all right so there's the sign I'm gonna make a copy of this all right so I'm gonna shift D hit escape so I don't move it so now I have a copy all right I'm gonna make one called sign material And then for I'm gonna make one called sign print. Okay, so sign print is where I'm gonna put the word is the layer that I'm gonna put the word Timken on, and then I will change the material of the actual sign using the Timken sign material object. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to go into UV editor with our sign print object so go make sure your scale is set okay since we scaled it our scale is off so we are going to select both the material so we'll go material object apply scale which is now one select our sign print object apply scale so now that's one whoops I goof that up I hit my mouse so object apply scale there we go okay now I actually changed my height that's what I did I don't want to do that I want that back to six <laughs> come on Christopher get with the program apply scale now we're good all right so both of those should be 6 by 20 okay and scale is applied alright so with Timken sign print selected let's go into the UV editor and hit A to select period to zoom in on that selection alright so there's our print object alright what we want to do is UV unwrap it UV smart UV hit OK and we have our sign uh, sorta okay gonna do one more thing we're gonna rotate this so hit A to select it and R90 
and then we are going to move that in the X direction so it's inside of our box just about like that click alright now what we're gonna do is save this out to an image alright and we're gonna bring that image into Krita and we're going to apply a texture to it okay but we need to decide how big we want that texture right so what we need to do is we need to get onto the internet and find a find a texture that will work So I have gone and did a search for Timken logo and turned on images and there's all types of images to use but what we want to do is find the cleanest biggest image as possible okay so this one eh, I don't really like it I like the size but I don't like the white background I don't want a white background I want a transparent background so we'll click on this one yeah that's good right there that's gonna look f perfect right there so the backgrounds transparent the size is 2500 by 1280 pixels which is a really nice size okay so but when we make our new image, we need to make our new image divisible by 4, right? And these are not, di well, the 1280 is divisible by 4, but the 2500 is not. Okay, so let's minimize this and calculate what we want to make our image. Okay, since our image is uh, 25 by 1280, we're just gonna make this a 2k image so with our UV selected come over here to UV export UV layout then you want to copy that and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in my model lib Timken folder I'm going to call that timkinsign.png. Okay. Then we're going to open up Krita, which we were doing all this stuff before. Um, but we don't need any of this anymore. So let's go ahead and click our Krita file save just so we don't lose it. And then all of this was just temporary so we can... Uh, let's go ahead and close all and I'm not going to save anything because it was all temporary anyway and what we're going to do is we're going to open file and we're going to navigate to where we just saved that UV image which was in our scenery projects in our what are we doing Canton uh, Akron Canton uh, buildings, package sources, model lib, Timken, and then there is our Timken sign print P P and G. Open that. So the gray area is our UV map. It's the workable area. Anything outside of that won't be seen. Okay. So this is our working area. So now what we need to do is open our browser and we are going to right click this image that we want and we're going to save image as and I'm going to put this in my prototypes and my prototype for Akron Canton and instead of a uh, SVG file we're gonna save that no no we're gonna save that S SVG okay get out of here and we're going to come back into our Krita and we're gonna layer 
import, import layer. And we are going to Oh, I put it in prototype, didn't I? Yeah, sorry. So I need to, oh, how do I want this? We'll go to Windows, go to Projects, go to Prototype, go to Akron Canton. OK. And looking for my Timken. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, there it is right there. Open. OK, there we go. There, we just opened it. <laughs> and we are going to take this and we're going to move this down. And we just need to increase the size. So I'm going to go to Transform Layer. And we're going to drag that until it's about like that. Okay, just like that. Now, it's a little transparent. It's not as bright as I'd want it to be, okay? So, I might need to create a new layer. Actually, I do not. I think this might work if it's a little blurry. Um, sometimes when I bring in an image, um, it may not look perfect. Um, so what I would do is I would like create a new layer and then I would use my smart select tool and select the color that I want so I get a mask kind of around all the colors and then I would come into my new layer like this okay and turn off all my other layers like that and then I'd come in my new layer um, oh I don't have my mask on wrong mask oh I uh, I'm digressing I'm getting way ahead of myself and I don't want to do that sorry uh, I would love to edit this part out, but I don't do edits on my videos. So we're going to leave it like that. And if I turn off my mask, let's yeah, turn off my mask. All right. And turn off that paint layer. Just leave. If I had, if I leave my background on. I'll get this gray and this black line around it. That will be part of my image, and I don't want that. I just want the text, just like that. All right, so I have my text, and then I'm going to do a file export, and I'm going to go into my project textures directory, which is Canton, uh, Akron Canton Buildings, Package Sources. Model lib and textures. All right, and I'm going to save this out as a new Timken sign print PNG, which is correct in my textures directory. Hit save. Do my compression, and then minimize this. Now, with in back in Blender, I still have my uh, sign selected my Timken sign print selected I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to call this Timken sign print hit enter and I'm going to come down to my MS FS parameters and select standard. And for the albedo, I'm going to open 
my Timken image that we just created, which is down at the bottom. Timken sign print.png open. And that notice it's upside down. I had a 50 50 chance of getting it right, but that's okay because we can do it this way. Now, with that polygon selected over here in the UV map, hit R180 and it turns it around like this. Okay, now the problem it has a back black, ugh, it has a black background, and we don't want that, we want it to be transparent. Transparent. Um, comes in opaque all right when you do this method so the only thing that you need to do is uh, in the MSFS parameters come down to where it says alpha mode and change opaque to blend so now that the the black is now transparent all right now we have one more step to make and that is getting our sign material to have that gray look to it right but that is the Timken sign material alright so we're done with the print so we can go to layout and let's select sign material and give it a gray color so hit uh, new and give it a name gray maybe sign just in case we have a gray material let's call it gray sign and then we can come down here to the base color and change it to gray like that and if you wanted the sign let's say it was uh, a metal sign and the the material for the sign was kind of shiny you can turn up metallic if we turn it all the way up it becomes more like a mirror okay so let's turn our metallic up a little bit and then move our roughness down so now the the sign itself has a little bit of sheen to it and then the colors of the letters are flat okay you can play around with how you want Tim can yeah you can play around with your background material okay so there's how we do the sign okay so today was long again but we did some uh, concrete block we did some window frames uh, we did two different ways to do glass and we put a Timken sign on there. Now there's a Timken sign on the other side of the building, so you can just basically copy this and move it over to the other side and scale it. Um, but the UV mapping will be correct, okay? So we did, a, we did quite a few things, long video again. Again, I'm sorry, but that's just the way I do things, sorry. Um, but you can fast forward. Um, if this was helpful, leave some comments. Uh, if you do things different, leave some comments. Um, you know, we're all here to learn. Um, especially with the glass. How do you guys do your glass? All right. Um, please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. Uh, we're going to continue and do some more texturing to our to our building before we bring it into the sim so we got those episodes coming up uh, also if you're inclined and want to support me uh, buymeacoffee.com slash my physical world and we will see you guys on the next video thanks for coming we'll see you guys later